What a tonal shift. What the? Hello, you cool cats. This is Mina with another episode of Steinsgate. And uh, there's a thunderstorm going on in the background. So if you happen to hear rain, hail, or, you know, the occasional lightning strike, uh, I apologize. I, I know this is really stupid that I would do a recording during a storm, but I really need to get some recordings knocked out so that way I can edit and yada yada yada. So let's get going. Plus, I am dying to know what happens after this. <gasps> what, what was that? <laughs> was that a scream? I think so. Only the presenter and a few other people are left in the assembly hall. Including Mayuri and me, less than half the audience remains. Everyone looks at each other anxiously, startled by the scream. Even I can't, cannot suppress a shiver. First, the explosion on the roof, now this. What's going on here? Mayuri squeezes my hand tight. Mayuri, here. Stay here, Mayuri. I take a deep breath, prepare myself, and head in the direction of the scream. The echoes lead me down a dark, empty hallway on the same floor. I'm pretty sure it came from around that corner. I crouch down and turn the corner slowly, keeping my eyes and ears peeled for any sign of danger. And there at the end of the passage, I see it. There's something on the ground. No. Someone. Motionless. Who is it? The clothes are familiar. It can't be. <laughs> uh oh. What? Makise Kurisu. Her face is turned away, but I know it's her. The impertinent genius girl I just fought with ten minutes ago is now face down in the pool of bright red blood. She's dead. <laughs> Suddenly, I realize that I'm shaking. I want to run. Run away. I shouldn't have come. This is wrong. Someone killed Makise Kurisu. There's no ex other explanation. Who would do such a thing? There's no one else here. <laughs> I twist around in shock. Some other men have followed me. And every one of them is ghastly pale. They must have seen the body. <laughs> Call the police! A man cries out in panic. At this, everyone else starts screaming and running away. I follow them, of course. There's absolutely no reason to stay here. Wait, 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 why are we running? We're not supposed to run. We're supposed to stick around so that way when the police have questions, you can answer them. Concern for Makise Kurisu is superseded by my instinctive urge to flee. When I get back to the assembly hall, Mayuri is waiting for me with tears in her eyes. Okari, what happened, Okarin? But we're leaving. I grab Mayuri's hand and run. I race down the stairs, trying to drive the image of Kurisu's dead body from my mind, but I can't. The redness of her blood is burned into my mind, more than the sight of the body itself. That was my first time seeing a dead body. Is that what it's like? When I realized that she was dead, I felt chilling terror and a surge of nausea. That was all I felt. Fear and disgust. Shouldn't there have been something more? I guess I just didn't know her that well. It is really coming down outside. <laughs> I finally stop once we get out to the main street, Chuodori. My chest pounds, my breathing labored from running down the stairs at full speed. <laughs> Hey, what happened? You look really pale. Mayuri doesn't seem to comprehend the situation. I guess it's because she didn't see the body. She's not even breathing hard. She looks slow, but she's actually pretty fast on her feet. Someone died. 
I take several deep breaths. The color of that blood still stains my brain, but I've calmed down a bit. Makise Kurisu is dead, and I don't know who the killer is. Sirens in the distance. I guess an ambulance will be here soon. Then the police will arrive, and this area will become a crime scene. But for now, the crowds milling through Akihabara have no idea what has happened. Everyone is going about their business as usual. The never-ending search for electronics, moe, and porn. Just another day in Akihabara. I take my phone out of my pocket, perhaps out of reflex. I'm not sure what I plan to do with it. Oh, I know, my friend Daru. I'll tell him what happened just now, since he knows about Makise Kresu. I suppose it might be disrespectful to the victim, but my adrenaline is pumping. I can't make calm decisions after witnessing something like that firsthand. That's how humans are, after all. We're not as special as we like to believe. At the end of the day, we're nothing but dirty, slime-like flesh. Our souls fester like semen left to rot in the womb. That's how we humans are. While wallowing in a bit of angst, I begin to type on my phone. Someone stabbed Makise Krisu. Don't know who. Looked bad. Hope she's okay. I don't know if she was stabbed. This just seems like the most logical explanation given the amount of blood and absence of a gunshot. On the other hand, I didn't write that she was dead, even though I'm pretty sure she was. I can't exactly explain why I didn't. If I had to say, I guess I felt like writing it down would set it in stone. It might make me feel guilty as well. The thought brings a smirk to my face. It's not like I'm the one who killed her. Why should I feel guilty? I just saw someone's death up close, and only a few minutes later I'm smiling. Am I really that cold and cr cruel? Well, I am a fiendish mad scientist, so it suits me. I finish typing and place my thumb over the send button, and then I press down. Sending? Okay. Wait. Zero five seven one zero oh, two four. <gasps> what? What was that? Wait, look around. Kyoto. They're gone. The people. Summer break. Noon. The busiest street in town. Just now, thousands of pedestrians vanished into thin air. Is this a dream? Am I hallucinating? I don't know. But they're gone. I saw them vanish with my own two eyes. I stand petrified, speechless, and alone on the empty street. What happened to my yodi? Desperate to find someone, anyone, I look up. And there, at the top of Radi Khan, sticking out of the eighth floor event hall where we just were, is a crashed satellite. Oh, this is the opening. Chapter one. Oh, time travel paranoia. おい。そこの貴様。俺たちが見えているか。Hey、you。Can <laughs> Your silence only strengthens my hypothesis. <laughs> I suppose that from your perspective, it appears that we are the ones inside the monitor. <laughs> but that's where you're wrong. Who is he talking to? Is he, like, talking to me? Like, actually me? For it is you who are inside. Your reality is nothing but lies and shadows. Naturally, that includes you, too. 
それはこちら側にある。True reality is on this side of the screen. 自分が何を指摘されているのかすら分かっていないか。無理もない。Don't believe me, I don't blame you. Few are those who can handle the truth. まあいい。貴様には分かりやすく。俺たちのことについて説明してやろうではないか。まず。Oh, no. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> But no matter, I shall speak in simpler terms, easy enough for even you to understand. I don't know what to do. 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 This is the future gadget laboratory located in the Akihabara district of Tokyo. We call it simply the lab. Our purpose is to shatter the system and plunge the world into chaos. So, Nanda. Wadai koto shita dame nanda yo, Okari. Really? You shouldn't do bad things, Okari. Ma, i r i w a s k o s h i dame t e i r o Quiet. I'm a mad scientist, remember? Eki kara detara, chuo dori o susumi. スーヒロ町駅の交差点を蔵前橋通りへ左折次の信号の一歩手前の路地を入ると大日山ビルという古臭い雑居ビルがあるその2階に我がラボは今日構えている From the station head down to Churori until you reach Suihiro station then take a left onto Kurema Bashi Dori In the alley before the traffic light, you'll find the rundown Oyama building. The lab is on the second floor. Mejirushi wa. Bill ikkai ni aru. Brown Kan Kobo. Toyu. Maniac na tenanto dana. On the first floor is a store of ill repute called the Brown Tube Workshop. You can't miss it. Ima doki. Kyushik no Brown Kan Telebi da ke wo atskatte iru shop da. いかに電気街である秋葉原というのも需要があるとは思えない。さびれた店なのだ。It deals exclusively in CRT monitors of all things. Can you imagine? Even in the heart of Akihabara's electronic town, the demand for CRTs is practically non-existent. だが、ブラウン管工房店長である天王寺というおっさんは、このビルのオーナーでもある。But、the proprietor of the Braun Tube Workshop, Tenoji, is the owner of the building. You any. Ima ya cue pitch de Toshkai has a sesame. Shkamo koto steer kono akihabara de aroto. Dora kumardashi no mise o kamaete irareto to you wakeda. That's how he can afford to maintain his ridiculously niche hobby shop even as land value continues to rise. Saiwa ni mano tencho wa. Hito miru mewa are you wakeda. この俺のカリスマ性を見抜き、ビル2階をまるまるワンフロア、ただ同然で貸してくれたのだ。He may seem a rough sort, but he was no match for my charisma. Now the entire second floor is mine for the next to nothing. だが、未来ガジェット研究所は、深刻な人材不足のため、優秀な研究員を随時募集中だ。今のところ、所属研究員は。I digress. The future gadget laboratory is currently experiencing a severe shortage of manpower. We welcome dedicated scientists from all fields to apply. At present, our researchers are. オカリオカリ、そこはラボメンって言わなきゃ。所属研究員じゃなくて。オカリンオカリン、you gotta say lab mems, not researchers. ラボメン、すなわち。ラボラトリーメンバーは俺を含めて3人である。He accommodates? I guess that's. <laughs> Our lab mems, laboratory members, are three. ラボメンナンバー001ラボ創設者にして、狂気のマッドサイエンティストであるこの俺、法院狂魔 !I am the founder of the future gadget lab. Lab mem number 001, the insane mad scientist Hyo and Kyoma. Okarin te yobikata no ho ga kawaii no ni. Okarin is cuter though. Mso ste, cosplay ga shimi no kou itten. 
ラボメンナンバー002シーナマユリ Next we have our resident cosplayer and only female member Lab Mem number 002シーナマユリテッテルーマユシーです着るんじゃなくて作るのが趣味だよテッテルーカミマユシー I like making costumes more than wearing them You remind me of another cosplayer. Saigoni Super Hacker Laboman number 003 Hashida Itarda. And last, we have our resident Super Hacker Lab Mem number 003 Hashida Itaru. Super Hacker the Obunayo Super Hacker Daro Joko. Stop calling me that. It's Super Hacker, duh. そんな我々三人で構成される未来ガジェット研究所の活動内容はそのものズバリ発明である。Here at the Future Gadget Laboratory, we devote ourselves to the art of invention. 詳細は我がラボのホームページを見てくれ。For details, see our lab's homepage. もちろん、闇の支配権力と戦うための未来ガジェットが最優先事項だが、その研究から派生する副産物的な発明も多い。というか今のところはそっちばかりだ。Our top priority, of course, is to develop weapons for the war with the Dark Dominion, but that research has spawned a number of offshoot inventions. In fact, that's all it spawned. すでに我々は8つの未来ガジェットを完成させた。だが、これはまだ上昇でしかない。未来ガジェットのアイデアは俺の中に108まであるのだ。Our arsenal of future gadgets is up to eight, but this is just the beginning. I have a total of 108 inventions to create. Bow, tennis manga, みたいにですね。わかります。Like that tennis manga, right? I get it. 人の煩悩の数といえ、このアットチャンネルの名。No, it's the number of earthly desires and mortals, you at channel junkie. それと、俺が話しているのだから、口出しをするなと言っているだろ。I thought I told you not to interrupt me when I'm talking. そもそもオカリン、さっきからなんで一人ごと喋ってんの Yeah, I wouldn't want to interrupt you talking to yourself. 一人ごとではない。見てわからないのか俺は今、モニターの向こうにいるこいつに話しかけているのだ。So is he on like, I don't know what was the thing back then, like MSN Messenger or like, is he like recording for like his, his web page or what, what, what's going on here? Uh, I'm not talking to myself. Can't you see? I'm talking to the person behind the monitor. Ah, he just grinned. What are you grinning about, damn you? You don't even exist outside that monitor. Just say, don't look at me. I don't think that's gonna work. 俺たちに話しかけられていることにすら気づいていないらしいな。自覚がないというのは、実に不幸なことだ。It appears our attempts to communicate have failed. It's sad to see someone so deeply in denial of reality. その人にしてみたら、マユシーたちがゲームみたいに見えてるのかな。Maybe they think we're in the game? そいつには現実なのかゲームなのかっていう発想さえないんじゃね I doubt it's even occurred to them. But aren't your 2D girlfriends the same way? That's different. Those girls are my wives. Nobody cares about your harem. But, Mayushi said that it was a very interesting theme. If you were in the game of our game, if you were in the game of our game, それを見極めるすべはあると思う But Mayushi touched upon a very interesting theme, you know? What if we're actually just characters in a game? Any way we can know for sure? ないな。No. 即答かよ。Come on. 故に、そのような議論は不毛。世界の支配構造を打ち砕く方法について考える方がよほど有意義だ。Such questions are meaningless. Our time is better spent thinking of ways to destroy the system. 12秒落つ
Nice chuny bro. bro. I step back from the monitor. <laughs> what is that? Displayed on the screen is the ugly cute character Alpacamon. This is a game called Alpacamon 2 where you speak to Alpacamon via microphone and watch him react. The game exploded in popularity when it was released 10 years ago, but personally, I find only the ugly part of Ugly Cube to be true. I bought it yesterday. 500 yen used, headset included. I turn to Dara with a menacing glare. Shut it, Haka. I'm no Chunibyo patient. I sweep my hair back and flash a devilish grin. I am Hyoin Kyoma. So you said this show. That's your character's name, right? Oh, darn. Your communication skills are beyond repair. I'll have you know I go to a ton of offline meets, and I'm always the life of the party. This oh no, that's so mean. Okay. This fat bespeckled guy is my brother in arms and right hand man, Hashira Itaru, nicknamed Daru. He's a hardcore otaku. You can always find him in front of the computer playing games and watching anime. He has 2D wives on whom he cheats with 3D maids. I don't agree with his preferences, but to him anything's fine as long as it's Moe. He's the reliable and skilled partner who brings my ideas to fruition. Despite his insistence that software is his forte, he shows remarkable aptitude with hardware as well. Over here, nursing a pricked finger, we have Sheena Mayuri, a 16-year-old high school student, if you can believe it. I've known her since we were both small. She's also an otaku, nowhere near Dari's level though. This ditzy girl is in charge of the lab's official costume division for women, and today she's working on costumes at her usual leisurely pace. Why does the future gadget laboratory need costumes for women? It doesn't. The truth is that Mayuri is completely useless, still there's no way I would ever kick her out. After all, she was the first one to join the future gadget laboratory. I still remember the day Mayuri first came to the lab. It was spring, she said to me. I belong here! <laughs> well, that certainly was cryptic. But her offer was my salvation, for she was the first to join me on my magnificent quest. She saved me from a solitary life on the run from the organization. I will never forget her kindness. Mayuri doesn't have to be useful. Her being here is enough. So, did Opakamon say anything? Yeah, then that. Nope, nothing. The human-faced alpaca inside the monitor was completely unresponsive. So unresponsive, you'd think the game was bugged. Whatever, I give up. Never again will I play this boring game. Damn, antisocial alpaca. I curse his name and smack the TV. As soon as I do, the TV makes it sound like it's shorted, then the screen goes blank. I change the channel. Nothing. Check the power cable? Nothing. Whack it again? Nothing. I guess it's broken. Damn. This crummy TV is on lease from the Braum Tube workshop downstairs. It's probably just old. You made Mr. Alpaca angry! <laughs> Damn. I'll have to get it repaired later. I turn off the TV and lie down on the couch. I'm fed up with the humidity of Japanese summers. I stare at a conspicuous stain on the ceiling while fanning myself. I close my eyes. And what naturally comes to mind is that impossible scene I saw an hour ago. Oh, okay.
okay, so I was wondering if this was like a flash forward, a flash back. I wasn't sure what, what was going on here because we, we jumped from this to that and that was, that was a bizarre leap. They're gone. As I left Radikon, everyone vanished before my eyes. I can't explain it. And it wasn't just the people on the street. The people in the stores, gone. In the restaurants, gone. Even the cars vanished, drivers and all. It all happened in the blink of an eye. Suddenly, an empty city spread before me. I could still hear the music from the stores, but those catchy melodies were the only sounds of life remaining. Heat was rising from the asphalt and waves, but I felt only a cold chill down my spine. I just stood there, breathless until... What's wrong? Mayuri's voice brought me back to reality. Mayuri hadn't disappeared. She was right there, looking at me with questioning eyes. Everyone disappeared just now, right? Huh? He's... Ugh, gosh, I hit the button. No, 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 no. You saw it too, right? Just now, before our very eyes. Panic took hold of me as the enormity of what had just happened struck me. Unable to control myself, I grabbed Mayuri by her slender shoulders and shook her. Did you see it, Mayuri? You saw it, right? Mayuri's head flopped back and forth from my shaking. shaking her and looked straight into her eyes. She returned my gaze with eyes clear as glass marbles. You saw nothing. Nothing at all. There were people here a second ago, weren't there? There were? Even the store employees are gone. That's impossible I buy any measure. Of course they are. Her reply didn't make any sense. It was like this when we got here. Oh, I know. You're seeing things, aren't you? I'm sure it's because of the heat. How could she laugh at a time like this? I always thought she was a bit strange, but maybe her brain is actually broken. I realized that she couldn't help me. With nowhere else to turn, I look up at the bright blue sky. There wasn't a cloud in sight. The scorching summer sun shone bright through the gaps between Akiba's buildings. Naturally, my eyes drifted to the top floor of Radikan, where I had just been a moment before. There was an enormous machine, like some kind of satellite, embedded in the roof of the building where, not five minutes before, I had found Makisa Kurisu's body in a pool of blood. What happened to her? Just before everyone disappeared, I could have sworn I heard an ambulance siren. Makisa Kurisu might still be in the dark, narrow passageway, cold, bloody, and alone. The thoughts disturbed me, but the question at the forefront of my mind was... So awesome. What the hell is that satellite doing there? Right before Dr. Nakabachi's presentation, the building shook like a bomb had exploded. The roof door lock had been broken, and beyond it, someone had placed a satellite-like machine shrouded in smoke and glowing dust. When I first saw it, the satellite was on the rooftop. But that was not what I was seeing now. This satellite had penetrated the top floor of the building, obliterating the room where Dr. Nakabachi's press conference had been held. It must have fallen out of orbit without burning up in the atmosphere somehow. I knew it was crazy, but what other explanation could there be? The real question was, when did that happen? Mayuri, about that satellite. <sighs> yup, what a surprise, huh? What do you mean? What was a surprise? 
He made a huge kaplow sound. A huge kaplow? Certainly did make a sound, but I don't think it was kaplow. I'd say it was more like zoom. Did that satellite fall out of the sky? Did it? Do you think any aliens were on board? <gasps> Had I lost my mind? What I had seen didn't match at all with what Mayuri was saying. Suddenly, nothing seemed real. Had I dreamt at all? Hey, you too. Just then, a uniformed policeman ran up to us, his expression stern. What do you think you're doing here? This area is off limits. You have to leave. First, my good man, let's call you Officer A. I have one question. Officer A. Thousands of people just vanished. You saw it too, didn't you? What are you talking about? Get out of here! I was quickly losing confidence in my own memories. I decided to tell him about Makisei Kurisu and get him to call an ambulance, but before I could... Look, I don't have time for your nonsense. The policeman took me by the upper arm and said... No one got stabbed at Radikan. What? How could he say that with such certainty? While I was still trying to comprehend the situation, the policeman forcefully led us away. We were escorted up to UPX and released. There were people at UPX, like usual. Actually, there were far more people than usual. The place was packed. Just as Officer A had said, Trudority had been blockaded by the police, so nobody could enter. There was nothing we could do, so we headed back to the lab. And that brings us to the present. Alright, so let's take a look at the tips list. Um, oh yeah, we already read the bottom three, so I'm just going to mark those as red. Dory. Word. Used here as a suffix, meaning street. Moe. A word used to describe character traits that are cute or endearing, includes flaws such as glasses, clumsiness, or ditziness. Also used to refer to the culture of entertainment centered around characters who possess such traits. Pronounced Moe. The system. The system is by is the means by which the organization maintains its grip on humanity. Its full scope is too vast to comprehend, but suffice it to say that the system gives the organization influence over government, religion, media, culture, and science worldwide. Most people do not even know that their lives are controlled by the system. It is so deeply embedded in the fabric of society that modern civilization would not be able to function without it. Destroying the system, therefore, would plunge the world into chaos. Cosplay, an abbreviation of costume play, to dress up in costume, most often in a fictional character, as a fictional character. People who cosplay are called cosplayers, which can be shortened to layers. Many cosplayers make their own costumes. Is that new? I've never heard of anybody calling a cosplayer a layers or layer, whatever, whatever. <laughs> Super hacker. A tremendously skilled hacker, or at least someone who claims to be one. The threat, my friend's a hacker so he can easily find out who you are, often appears during arguments on the internet. People mockingly call the obviously non-existent hacker a hacka. At Channel. Japan's most popular message board covers a wide variety of topics from hacking to cooking to anime to current events. Don't look at me. On the internet, it's an unwritten rule to say this whenever you see an image of someone or something looking towards the camera. A female character in anime, game, or manga. Oh, 2D girl. Chinibyo. Literally, 8th grade syndrome. A term referring to a mindset exhibited primarily by teenage males. Also used as derogatory term to refer to older people who still exhibit this mindset. Characterized by an Affected attitude of nihilism or cynicism, extreme self-centeredness, delusions of power or superiority, and a consuming fear of being treated as a child. The person exhibiting these symptoms believes that they are cool, but most observers find them pathetic. Chunibyo, which often abbreviated Chuni, also refers to 
the fictional tropes that teenage males often enjoy, such as ancient conspiracies, superpowers, especially power sealed in the character's eye or arm, Norse mythology, battles for the fate of the multiverse, etc. The consummate Chunibyo case will work such elements into his own personal backstory. Okaden is a textbook example. That's funny. I've, I've heard of Chunis before. I just never... Like, I never use the term myself ever in an anime character, but that's funny. Alpaca, a mammal. Related to the camel. Average weight, 50 to 55 kilograms. Average length, around 2 meters. Uh, habitat, Peru, Bolivia, Chile. Recently, alpacas can even be found in America and New Zealand. Unlike camels, alpacas do not have humps. Their bodies are covered with fluffy fur. Due to their strangely long necks and charming faces, they have some popularity as an ugly yet cute, ugly cute animal. I like the term, ugly cute. <laughs> Offline meat. When members of an internet community meet in real life. Otaku, a term for people with an obsessive interest in a particular topic. Hobbyists most people re most often refers to fans of anime, manga, and video games, but they're also train otaku, military otaku, electronics otaku, etc. Basic basically, otaku is a geek um, for people who don't quite get into anime. Akihabara, a famous, oh, this is EPX, a, fam a major office building in Akihabara, la 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 la, and that is it, so I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Steins Gate, um, in case you couldn't tell, there's some problems with the audio, so I had to re-record a couple of parts, and, uh, it was mostly because the thunderstorm, like, really drowned out my voice, so I ended up having to re-record some stuff, I hope that doesn't, like, that doesn't bother you guys too much. The the ones that I had reactions to, I made sure to keep those. And the ones where I had to re-record, I changed things around a bit. But uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye!